so basically what I started stumbling upon was the dark side of reincarnation that what we're fed is bunnies and ducks and it's really ultimately a trap to get us to come back here when that's not what our destiny necessarily is so then when I started understanding wait hold on you're telling me that reincarnation is basically a soul trap and we're convinced through persuasion, through a scripted narrative, through scripted media, politics, like all this stuff, you guys. We're basically conditioned and reinforced to come back here. Many religions talk about following the light. When you die, follow the light. It's like, follow the light. But after I've been doing a couple, like, freaking weeks of research, I've been questioning myself as to, is that, is that really just a way to entrap us and make it to where our souls come back to this basically matrix of a world and the deeper i started diving into this i started learning different theories that have to do with this being a soul trap you know if you guys have seen the movie matrix some people go off of the notion that we are our, our souls are basically being used as a battery and that this world around us harnesses negative energy for its very existence. That's why there's so much weird stuff going on in the world. There's war, there's famine, there's homelessness, there's disease, there's, you know, if you even look at how kind of aggressive and crazy the food chain is, that animals have to kill other animals, and you don't even get us started on all the slaughterhouses humans have. Like, our existence is very strange, but it's dazzled with beautiful, like, nature, and, you know, we, we meet best friends and all this stuff, but the more I've been researching into this whole notion of reincarnation, I'm kind of wondering to myself, like, yo, is this really a trap? Like, are we really stuck in like a simulation, you know? And you guys are gonna think that I'm so crazy, but one of the reasons why I feel like everything is kind of circling itself back around and that somehow years ago, I'm talking almost 10 years ago, I was on this very track. I was in these very shoes that I'm standing in, but I let them go. I took them off and I walked another direction. I don't know if that's just because that's the way my life was supposed to go. I don't know if I just made a mistake along the way and I like I got distracted and lost focus of what I was doing. But I dedicated my whole first year of college into a synthesis essay for English, which basically proved to my professor that we were inside of a simulation. So like a 40 page paper. And I had all of this, this factual information to prove that we are in this sort of a matrix. And this was way before I was even into like watching weird sci-fi movies. I wasn't reading sci-fi books. I wasn't in this kind of like state of mind that I am now. I just randomly came into the conclusion like, oh, I need to persuade and show proof to persuade my teacher into believing my, uh, my statement in believing my claim then I want to I want to challenge myself. I want to prove that we're inside of a video game. I didn't even think of it as a simulation. I really wanted to prove that some 40 year old guy is playing a really, 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 really intense and advanced game of The Sims, you know, and that we really aren't real. We're just being played by somebody else, kind of like a Call of Duty game, you know, like, yes, you have a controller and you build your avatar and the game seems real and it feels real. And you interact with other people who are also in avatars, you know. That's like, that's what I was imagining this place to be, similar to a video game. But then I started doing a little bit more research into the ability for, hey, maybe this was a system that was hijacked and turned into something. Maybe this is a, a copy of somewhere else. Like you guys have seen... Um, get out no not get out you guys have seen us right uh peels moving jordan i think his name is jordan and the ending is so confusing because it's almost showing like the underworld and the upper world but they're happening simultaneously and then sorry this is all over the place then i started wondering like maybe that was just a parallel universe like metaphor maybe that's kind of symbolizing a parallel universe universe but then i was like no what if it's symbolizing that the world we're walking in is a dark, twisted simulation of the real world. And where the real world and, you know, it, it, it's just so interesting. So <laughs> I don't even know what I'm trying to say. But 10 years ago, I was doing hours and hours and hours of not necessarily research into 
reincarnation being a soul trap but into us being in a simulation and now all of a sudden i'm looking at all of the notes that i've been taking throughout these past weeks and it's literally almost coinciding with the notion of the simulation theory and so when i see so many things like adding together and when i was looking at the simulation theory nobody was even talking about near-death experiences and how that was proof that we're in some sort of just weird system that we're not supposed to be in but we were tricked into coming here and what's even more crazy is this one sounds very, very dark. It's the very dark outlook that this is a soul trap and that whatever is controlling us is like the matrix. It is a negative entity that feeds off of us and it will suck us back here and make us fall in love with the idea of coming back here because it needs souls and their pain to survive, right? That was Howie Makowski's. That was Howdy Makowski's theory. And I, I have some of his books on the way. Like I said, I'm over here like... I can't just make a video where I'm stating all of these facts. I'm over here just right now telling you what I think. And sorry if it's coming out like just a spew of bull crap. But that was Howdy Makowski's version. He thinks this is a very dark, dark soul trap, like a prison system. And that we need to escape. We need to wake up. We need to make sure that when it comes time for our death, we aren't tricked. We, uh, we aren't influenced by some fake spirit guide that is just pretending to be somebody else so we follow them back and ultimately are born into a new body hopefully you guys understand why i feel like this is a little bit too intense for me to just like try to try to do so after i was reading um so much information uh that he created so many interviews from him a lot of his work i ran into other individuals and these people are on the same kind of like wavelength as he that yes we are in a simulation yes this is a, a type of soul trap but they don't believe that the operator is negative and that it harnesses off of us like we're a battery so that's where like i've kind of been like what what do we go with because howdy even says i wrote it down somewhere he says as long as you are trying to make this place what you believe it's supposed to be they have you trapped if you really want to reach the totality of yourself, you cannot be in a simulation, an artificial construct. I, you know, and I just have, since being introduced to this notion that we're inside of this trap, this system and this simulation, I have a million questions and when I have a million questions, I feel like I have to at least get them partially answered before I even come and talk to you guys or it's like I'm just asking questions in, into the air and hoping an answer will come to me without me doing the work. So like I have these questions that I've been trying to get like an answer to but then it's almost like I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Yes, we, we all know for a fact that we are, like, in my opinion, immortal souls. A soul can never die, okay? And that's kind of the concept of reincarnation. A soul doesn't die, only the body does. So it's kind of like, what happens after the body dies? Where does the soul go? That's kind of where we're up in the air about. Do we just go to heaven? Um, is it like in philosophy where they think that it's just a dreamless sleep? You know, you're just darkness. There's nothing. There's nothing more to it. You only live once, you know? When our body dies... Do we have a short time up in heaven where we go and we meet everybody else? Are we just automatically reincarnated back into somebody? And then if we are, then that completely contradicts my whole video I made on soul contracts and weight lines. And if we are in a matrix system, then the idea of soul contracts is completely an illusion to keep us stuck here. You know, to think that, oh, you guys, I have been in such a freaking rabbit hole. And when I think about soul contracts being an illusion, I'm like, damn, what other tricks and traps are placed here to keep us stuck and controlled and vibrating at such a low frequency that we can't see reality for what it is? Or we don't have the want. Because think about it. How easy is it to control a whole bunch of people? Not only that, imagine if we really are immortal souls having a human experience. If we are all free thinkers and have the ability to create our own reality, imagine how scary that is for the people who want to be in control of us, the people who want to keep government a thing, the people who want to have us policed and governed and all of this stuff, you know, the very people who, you know, create our own food. Why are they so corrupt? In my opinion, it's because it, it, corruption causes a lower vibration and the lower you are, the easier you are to, to control. So this is why, in a sense, I agree with what, what Howdy is saying, that this is kind of like a matrix system where 
as long as we're here, the soul will be a powerhouse basically for the system. It'll forever feed on us like a battery source. And the lower our battery, the better it is, right? So seriously, I just, I did, I even sat down and I asked myself, what are all the traps that you can think of that would make this theory make sense? And I said, well, hell, the media, the news and social media is so controlled and scripted that they want to control our thoughts, the narrative, what we think about, what our children think about. It's disgusting. You, everybody knows for a fact when we get on social media, our vibration lowers a lot unless we literally put the power into making sure it doesn't. But that's even harder because when it's the whole part of their system is to destroy our free thinking ability, our confidence, our intuition, our ability to question, like this is starting to make a lot of sense to me. The government is completely corrupted. We've seen what's been happening to religion, right? And I even asked myself, is are all religions just a soul trap, a technique to make us to make us believe in something, right? Because like I said, once we have a belief system, we can be controlled, you know? I don't know. And then I even said uh, the spirit guide. What if that's another trap too? People are out here thinking that they actually have spirit guides guiding them and doing the like, helping them. And what, uh, what a lot of people were saying who are deep into this research, they're saying, how can we ask a universe for guidance when we don't even understand the true concept of the universe we're a part of we don't really know what's out there we don't know who created this universe we really don't we can sit and act like we do but you know like i said i feel like the second we sit down and like oh yeah this is what happened and we don't question or look deep enough and that's what's even more crazy is half of the textbooks that used to be around are are burned right there's sense there's been censorship going on for forever what are they trying to censor why do they want to control the story so strongly why do they all want us to at least not think the same, but then at least we got six different things to believe in? Millions of people divided into six different categories of belief systems. It's still like, I'm just so, I'm so confused, you guys. And then um, another crazy aspect of reincarnation is the memory wipe that we have. None of us have any memory of our past life. No matter how, but then what's crazy is that there are these certain children and these certain people who do have crazy memories of past lives to the point where they can remember exactly where they lived and the people they were married to. And you can look back in history and find these people and see that this kid isn't lying and that this might be a soul that has reincarnated over and over and over again. And with that, the idea also, which is really creepy to me, sorry, I can literally probably go on for hours, hours and hours. What's also really creepy to me is that one of the um, notions that sides with reincarnation being real, whether reincarnation is positive or negative, right? Um, is, uh, what was I just about to say? Mm. And one of the major theories that kind of backs all of this up about our souls being immortal and whatnot. So one, oh my gosh. So one theory, so you know how we mentioned that the soul can never die? So supposedly there's a theory out there that there's no such thing as a new soul. There cannot be a new soul. Every child that is born is just a soul reincarnated back into another human existence. That creeps me out because think about it. So many people think that they're giving birth. Say this, this is all theory, all right? <laughs> but it's fun, to, it's, a, it's fun to ponder. Every woman who gives birth to a new baby thinks that they're creating this like new, never before, has never experienced life. What if it's just an old soul that was tricked and trapped and came back here and it's it, it has had a memory wipe and just has no idea. So it looks at you like, hey, I guess you're my new mom. I'll just convince myself that you're my new mom. Like this stuff is just so interesting to me. And another reason why some of these are a little bit... Um, Oh, I kind of just answered my own question. I feel like one of the reasons why I strayed away from this topic was because my dad passed away. I had been kind of getting used to my life without my mom when I wrote and did all the research on living in a simulation, right? After I lost my dad, even the thought of like me not knowing where he is, maybe he's already reincarnated into another baby walking around in Texas somewhere, you know what I mean? I didn't want to think about that because it's too much for me to think about and process, you know, the death itself at the same time. 
it's been years since that has happened. So I kind of feel like maybe I've gone through that stage of grief that's now allowed me to explore these concepts a little bit more. When something does come up that completely contradicts something I've thought, I don't get too emotionally crazed about it, right? I know I'm not gonna spiral off into some weird like psychosis. I mean, trust me, I feel like I'm going freaking crazy, but it's just because I'm honestly forcing my mind to expand in more ways and think about different possibilities. We have no idea, like literally no idea. We have no idea. And I think the beauty in not knowing and having just this oomph to figure it out is what we need. We need this. We don't want to be stuck on social media. We don't want to be just like losing the inability to watch an hour long documentary and maybe learn something, you know? They want us at such as fast paced, zero attention span. We won't learn anything that way. You know, we'll just want to jump from one thing to the next, one thing to the next. And I feel like that's why I've been having such a hard time is for literally the past two weeks, I can't step away from this topic. It gets deeper and deeper and deeper and almost more theories and uh just i have just so many questions you guys that i don't know what to do i don't know what to do <laughs> it's so interesting it's so interesting you guys um And another little topic that is talked about is if our soul and spirit that's like inside of us, it's almost like the universe, not the universe, but it's almost like society and the people who are a part of this world want to do everything in their power to get your spirit and soul outside of your body. So you're disconnected, disattached to that, to where it is hard for us to hear our own thoughts, to hear our intuition speak up because we're separated from our, our true self, you know? All of these things that are happening, even like what I mentioned, the media, the government, religion, these spirit guides, they are all outside of us. They're not within us. But there's been so many times where I told you guys, like, we know everything. I swear we do. We have all the knowledge hit, hidden inside of us somewhere. And I truly do believe this if we want to go down the whole, uh, go down the road of believing in a memory wipe, you know? If we come here, some people... Some people on the positive aspect of saying, no, this isn't a soul trap, they have reasons for why we still have a memory wipe. Imagine if we still had all of the knowledge that is available on the astral plane, that place we go to after we die. We have all these memories of our past lives, people we used to be, people we used to hang out with, you know? If we came back and were born into another body and a new family and remembered all of that old stuff, that's too much information swimming around our head for us to even want to learn something, for us to want to meet new people. We might be missing our, our old wife, our old grandpa, you know? But we come in, we come here because our soul still has more to learn. But then that's where you circle right back around to, you keep coming back and back and back. This has to be some sort of a trap. What happens if you don't come back? What happens if you choose to, to not follow the light? Like all of this really, really weird, weird stuff. And so uh, Howie Mikowski, um, another one of the things he said was, this isn't a test for the soul. Um, ultimately, it's kind of a test to see which race is the easiest to control. And I know that sounds so intense. It sounds so intense. But when one of the, one of the interesting theories that some of these people dive into is how there have been very old tribes and groups of people that have seemingly became extinct. And one of the things that people wonder is if they harnessed so much information that they learned how to escape. They literally learned how to not come back here and explore whatever else is out there, you know? So it's just so interesting for me to think because I've always wondered this. And this topic can even go into, I think it's the title is called eugenics. Um, altering just DNAs and stuff like that, right? Like what what are what would be the reason for that? Is it for evolution of human or is it for de-evolution and we're easier to be controlled, you know? It's just it's so strange to me. It is so strange. And I feel so lost <laughs> that 
I, I didn't know where to even start. And I don't want the days to just keep on passing and me not say anything on YouTube, you know? Or my next YouTube video have nothing to do with reincarnation and everything to do with like another topic. You know, I don't want anybody to think I'm just completely forgetting about the topic, that I don't care or that it's just like not important. It's basically consumed me, nonetheless. <laughs> and um, in a healthy manner, trust me, I'm over here. I'm being healthy about it. But you guys know me. I love researching. I love reading. And it's been a while since I've had something basically make me question everything in this in this nature. You know, now like everything. I'm <laughs> questioning everything. But um, that's I I don't know. I I'm so sorry. This is all over the place. Um. I, I don't know. I just feel like, I don't know. <laughs>